It's loading. It's almost there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. I'm wondering. Okay. Loading. Almost there. Okay, Miriam, I think we're live now. Oh, cool. Let me try to get us shared out into my Facebook group. Okay, Miriam, I think we're live now. <laughs> I hear that feedback. Yeah, I, I think I solved the feedback problem. <laughs> All right. It was in two different places. You don't hear the feedback anymore, right? No, no, no. Not okay, enough. awesome. Doing it. Are you are you seeing it? I'll share it out too. Yeah, yeah, I am seeing it on your page. I was um in your Empire Life Facebook group at first. I'm sharing it out too to the group. Come join us, everybody. I'm not sure we can see comments when we're off directly from Zoom because we're broadcasting from Zoom. We'll be able to answer them after. Yeah, I'll try to see if I can have it open from my phone. Oh yeah, that's true. That's a good idea. And we, I am seeing subtitles too, so that's really cool. Look at us. Look at us, subtitles, super fancy. Wow. <laughs> I'm happy to be here. <laughs> Broadcasting from Zoom. Woo, don't have to be on our phones. <laughs> I know that was a bonus. I was like, yes, okay. Yes. Because usually you always try to make sure that your phone is, or I make sure my phone is fully charged and then my yes. paws are fully charged and then it's like sitting just right and the right angle. <laughs> it's more, um, it can be more involved than it needs to be, right? Like, I can yeah. spend so and they're like, okay, let me get this just right. You already saw like the lighting. I'm like, okay, let me get my light up. <laughs> oh yeah, you look great. So uh, I'll go ahead and introduce you. So this is the first Monday masterclass of a series. We're doing four, four sessions in, the, in this series, all about self-care and it's about pouring into our online community and bringing on female founder experts to interview, to get tips from them about their expertise and today I'm with Miriam Pop. Did I say that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> and she's with Vibrant Lifestyle Coaching. And yeah. I'll hand it over to her to introduce herself a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. So I am the founder of Vibrant Lifestyle Coaching. Um, I work primarily with women, uh, overworked, overstressed, women on a mission. Um, I, I help lead them back to their intuitive guidance, back to their truth, right? Because um, I believe when we're out of alignment with our truths, with ourselves, right, uh, that's when uh, our lives can lead to a lot of stress. So I really believe in a mind, body, soul approach to stress. And a key component of that is self-care, how we're caring for ourselves, how we're nurturing ourselves um, in the midst of our storms, right? Because life is going to happen. <laughs> we all know it's going to happen. So what are we doing to take care of ourselves through that, through the process, through whatever it is we're experiencing? Um, and I believe it's, you know, self-care, how we care for ourselves that um, gets us through and also can allow us to prevent um, a lot of, you know, health issues, life issues, work issues, whatever it may be. Um, so I really believe that stress management, self-care is all about preventative care, right? How we can really nurture and take care of ourselves for, for the long haul, for the road ahead of us. So it's a yes. little bit a lot of what we got going on there's over here a, at Bible Lifestyle Coaching. Oh yeah, for sure. And there's there's so much for us to unpack in the next four sessions. I really hope if you're joining us, if you continue to join us the next few Mondays, and then we have more female founders. I believe I'm all the way booked until October right now for Mondays. Or that's maybe awesome. More, maybe it's further than that, but we're getting everything organized. So make sure that you'll know about those ahead of time yeah. and bringing on experts to talk about their fields. There's so much to unpack as you were talking, like boundaries came up for me Yes, and clearly communicating what you desire or the ex setting 
certain clear expectations for people and how yeah. they're going to communicate with you. And yeah. I know you have some bullet points. Is there one that you want to dive into? Yeah. So um, with what I've kind of put together today for us, I really, really want to talk about um, output versus input, right? The energy we put out into our world versus the energy that we allow ourselves to receive. How are you pouring back into yourself, right? So what I've got for you today as we continue that conversation, um, I've got some journal prompts to help you build your self-awareness, right? Um, a big thing I work with my clients on is building self-awareness. Because if we know better, we can do better. It's not that, you know, life is just happening to us. It's about being a little bit more conscious, a little bit more aware and, and moving forward in life from, from that place, right? So I've got some prompts to help build self-awareness and then I will share at least three things you can start doing, um, start doing to care for yourself more, right? I'll share a mind tip, a body tip and a soul tip. Um, and, you know, I challenge you to try at least one of them in your world and, and make it a habit, right? Begin, begin building it in your world. So that's what I got for you guys. Um, and I guess if you're ready, Allison, I'll just jump right in. And we yeah, can let's do about, it. Yeah. Yeah. Why, why right self-care? Right? Yeah. Why self-care? Um, I feel like self-care has become one of those like buzzwords, if you will. Everyone's talking about mm -hmm. it. We gotta, gotta care for ourselves, self-care. But why, right? But why? And so this is where um, you know, I think that output versus input is important to, to take a look at, to dive into, right? I, um, I can speak for myself, for a lot of my clients, and I know Allison's on board with this as well, but we are all out here doing so much all the time, whether that is as an entrepreneur, um, you know, Allison's a mom, uh, as that's just being a human out here, we're all doing a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, we're pouring out a lot. We're showing up a lot. Um, if there are some caretakers watching, uh, caretakers are out here pouring out the most and then some. And so my question to you guys is, well, how much are you pouring back in, right? So if you're giving out to your world, giving, giving, giving to your world, to the people around you, to your jobs, whatever it may be, what are you doing to now pour back in? Because the more we put out, right, we're replenishing. So are you replenishing as you're going along? Um, especially as an entrepreneur, being mindful of how I replenish myself um, throughout the different phases of my business has made a huge difference. Um, Allison, does that speak to you as well? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. the the word rituals comes up for me. Yeah. It's like having non-negotiable rituals yeah. that you do every week to keep, to make sure it's not, it needs to be non-negotiable. It has to happen. <laughs> Otherwise it won't happen. There's a million yeah. other things that you can put in that time yeah. related to the input. That's what's coming up for me. Yeah, I love that. Cause here's the thing. I know I attract fellow like type A, gotta get the stuff done, right? Like it's, it's just uh, what I attract in the world what my clients tend to be. And so if you are someone who's always putting out and, and that's just, you know, and you get life from that. You feel energized from showing up and serving and doing the things. Well, if that's going to be the case, make sure you're pouring just as much energy back into yourself, right? Because it's that go, 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 that do, 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 that accomplish, accomplish, accomplish. We're pouring so much energy out into what we're doing. We don't always think about how impactful it can be to take care of ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. To pour that energy back in. We want to continue showing up at a high level not realizing, well, we need to treat ourselves like high level um, beings, high level energy, right? High level engines out here. What are we doing to uh, maintain ourselves, right? And so I feel like that's why understanding that the output versus input, I understand that I am just pouring out into the world and maybe I'm starting to see the effects of chronic stress, right? Um, when I say the effects of chronic stress or chronic stress, I should say like, Chronic stress will lead to weight issues, right? Mm -hmm. Hypertension, right? High blood pressure, uh, diabetes, right? Um, mm -hmm. Sleep loss, headaches, all sorts of issues that I'm sure you know somebody in your world who claims to have one of those issues going on in their world, right? So um, I think it's important to keep in mind that if you are going to show up at a high level, you need to take care of yourself at a high level, right? And so that is our, um, the big why for self-care in my opinion, right? Because uh, yeah, let's take on, care just, of ourselves. Just one second, just one yeah, second. Yeah, yeah.
speaking of being a mom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you do what you gotta do. <laughs> no, I can, uh, you know, as, as you were also talking about the high level, the, we want to have high level output and we want to keep going. I mm-hmm. also feel to make a side note on that, that mm-hmm. it's not something that we learn. Yeah. Uh, we may feel lazy mm-hmm. or inefficient at first when we actually put that time in our schedule or take, take that time for ourselves. It might feel or for me, this are probably most type A people like you're describing <laughs> that are watching this, you know, the ambitious, amazing, kicking ass all the time woman that's watching this. It's it, you, when we have that downtime, so many ideas come flooding in. We're actually creating space and holding space, and we're teaching other people how much we value that space like as a mom if I'm taking a bath you know I want that time to myself and my daughter is a teenager now she's learned that over time yeah. right like this is my time <laughs> she's like, like oh, let me not bother mom right now <laughs> yes <laughs> or if we're in a meeting you know like unless it's an emergency and we're it might feel counterintuitive though because we think I can give, I can just keep giving, I can just keep showing up. And we don't realize in that time that we're taking for ourselves, like going on a vacation, taking a bath, doing a hair mask, all of those things are actually going to add and kind of free up some space in our brain to be able to come back for the higher level output. And I'm really curious, um, or maybe that's one of your mindset tips is about how do we transition in from that kind of thinking of I'm not sure I deserve this or these yeah. people need me and we even feel some kind of validation yeah. and some high out of all these people needing us and how <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> like, uh, everything, that, oh. <laughs> <laughs> everything you're saying um you know so often when my clients first come to me when we first start working together that there is this strong belief that taking care of oneself pulling back and taking care of oneself is selfish right these what well, this these people need me mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. or or you know this needs me this project needs me like i have to you know show up at work i have to push through and get this done and um you know this idea of of literally caring for ourselves the way we care for others is such a foreign concept. Um, and, and so what I wanna say and, and validate for anyone out there who's listening right now, if you do, if you also feel like, oh my God, it's selfish of me, um, you're not alone. <laughs> I have witnessed people move past that and have stronger, bigger, better relationships as a result of taking care of themselves. So if you're one of these people in this space where you feel like taking care of yourself is selfish, um, I can't, you know, pull back and take this moment to myself because X, Y, and Z might fall apart. So uh, maybe this is going to feel a little harsh, but what would you rather the thing to fall apart because you weren't there to do it or the thing to fall apart because you fell apart already and you can't show up, right? Mm -hmm. So when you care for yourself, you're allowing yourself to have the stamina to continue showing up. But if you never take that pause to care for yourself, how do you see yourself being able to show up in the long term with your health in mind, with your soul and spirit intact, with with your mind and your ability to make decisions at its peak, right? All of that requires kind of pulling back a little bit and going inward. Something I think that's super important to remember if you are out here on your your grind, your hustle, whatever, if you are consistently showing up in your world, every time that you show up towards your goal, you're building a momentum, okay? You're building a momentum. You pulling back to pour into yourself and care for yourself doesn't put that momentum at stop. It doesn't put that momentum back at ground zero where you started months ago. No, no, no. You've built something. It's going to continue moving. And guess what? When you show back up with what you've created, uh, feeling rested, feeling full, feeling alive, feeling vibrant, plug, 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 (laughs) (laughs) everything gets to expand with you, right? But if you are building this momentum, wearing yourself thin, can't show up, not sleeping, having headaches, forgetting tasks, all the effects of, you know, long-term chronic stress catching up with you 
you can't do the thing, right? So um, if you're in that place where this feels selfish, I want you to keep in mind that not taking care of yourself, not taking care of yourself is just as selfish, right? You need to pour in in order to be able to pour back out. Um, if I can share a tip, I always say, baby steps, start little, right? Start little. Um, I'm going to dive into my journal prompts because I think yeah. this is a, a yeah, great perfect. place. To have, I love um, it. Introduce that, right? So mm -hmm. like I mentioned earlier, I believe that self-awareness is the key to all of this, right? There's what I've experienced. There's what you've experienced. Mm -hmm. your awareness around your experience is what builds your world, right? So I can share all the things, but it's got to work and speak to you. And how do we do that? Because by becoming aware of what it is that, that you require. Or desire. Sure. So totally. my first journal prompt for you, or, or a thing I want you to consider when becoming aware of your energy output versus input is how much time do you spend doing things for your own enjoyment and fulfillment? And so the key thing there is the enjoyment and fulfillment of things, right? Because you could say that doing something for someone else makes you happy. Good, great, okay. Does it fulfill you? Does it bring joy? Like, does it light you up? Does it leave you walking on air? Those are the things that I want you to really be thinking about. How much time do you spend doing those things, okay? Um, it could deal with others, it could not deal with others. But if anything, I want you to think about enjoyment and fulfillment. What are those things, right? How much time do you spend doing them in your world? Uh, the next two things I want you to consider is what lights you up and what drains you, right? Mm -hmm. If you already know the things that drain you in your world and you know you have that thing coming up, right? And you know what lights you up, maybe you pair those things, right? So maybe it's okay, I know I've got to go see so-and-so and they talk a lot and as an introvert, it leaves me so wiped out but there's someone who I really enjoy being around. I really care about them. Um, I just always leave drained, right? I'm sure we've all got somebody in our worlds like that. For sure. <laughs> you know? And so it's then saying, okay, I've got my draining activity. Let me plan to do this thing that lights me up afterwards, right? Whatever that may be. Maybe it's a Netflix marathon. Uh, maybe it's going grabbing food from your takeout from your favorite restaurant. Uh, maybe it's hiding out and reading a book. It doesn't matter. What lights you up is your thing, right? No shame in your game, but pair it. Pair it off with the things that drain you. If there are things that drain you in your world that you can kind of trim the fat on and move aside, do that. That's the power in knowing, right? If you want to experience more joy and fulfillment and vibrancy in your life, do more of the things that light you up, right? Be intentional about it. Um, one of the biggest things that I see uh, my clients navigating is kind of coming out of zombie mode is what I call it, right? We're just mm -hmm. going through the motions, right? With no self-awareness to what lights me up, what brings me joy, what drains me, what makes me happy, uh, what my firm boundaries are, you know, what are the things that I'm okay with letting slide? Like, know these things about yourself. Uh, um, wherever you are on your self-care journey or, or your healing journey, your journey back to yourself, um, I want you to question everything. Question what you've believed for a long time. Question something that you learned last week. Question everything and really get clear about what it is for you, right? I think that's the beautiful piece with self-care is it's really bringing you back to you um, and, and helping you, you show up right? Show up in your, in your fullness. So um, those are the three self-awareness journal prompts I want you to consider. I'll run through them one more time, but how much time do you spend doing things for your own enjoyment and fulfillment, right? Number two, what lights you up, right? What makes you feel um, like you're, you're walking on, on air, right? What makes you feel um, like you can, you can do anything. What makes you feel like a total badass, right? What makes you feel like you're living your best life? And then what drains you? What depletes you? Um, who depletes you, right? I think that's a big thing to keep in mind. Who are the people in your world who um, leave you feeling drained, right? Um, what are the activities? What are the things, the places even? Some places will leave you like that. Mm -hmm. um, before I became uh, an entrepreneur and started vibrant lifestyle coaching, I was a hair sales for 13 years. 
I loved the work. I still love doing hair. Any chance I get to, you know, do an old client's hair or one of my, one of my friend's hair, I'm on it, right? But the place, the salon, going to that place every day was dreaming. I was tired before I even got out of the car in the parking lot, okay? Yeah. Like, <laughs> you know, I was, yeah. I was over it. You know, I hadn't been listening to my calling, right? I hadn't been right. uh, listening to where, you know, life wanted me to be and so what was the answer what was the answer oh let's make her like so annoyed and fed up <laughs> that she has no choice yes. but to um pack it up and, and move along right um but there was power in that self-awareness right mm -hmm. there's power in knowing that this thing no longer fulfills me and drains me so have that that self-awareness about you um, and if you explore those journal prompts, please let me know, either DM me or come back to the comments here. I want to come back and um, take a peek and, and witness you and hold space for you. Um, but yeah, those are your three for journal prompts. For and sure. if, we can share. If you, some do you have anything those. you want to say about them? I was going to say we can share some of them on the next session, too, about yeah. kind of like some of our because I, um, I wrote them down and I'm going to reflect on them too. <laughs> yes, I love that. I love that. Like get, um, that might give some juice or like energy into one thing that I, that came to mind was when I first started Empire Life, I used to think that I had to start my mornings like between eight and nine, because mm. that's what I did in my previous corporate position, previous corporate position. It's like every time, like, in, in software, we started by nine and we had a stand up meeting. So I thought I have to start my calls right then. And I noticed that I was really dragging and it was super draining to start calls at nine on certain days. Mm -hmm. And I remember saying that out loud in a, at a networking event. And one of the ladies said, what if you really think about when the times are that you're most productive in the day and you're like really on it? your brain is mentally aware, those times would be the best to take calls because you're bringing that energy, like you're setting the tone and the energy of the prospective client calls. Yeah. I was like, oh my gosh, that's the whole reason like, it's clicked <laughs> for me. Like that's one of the reasons why I started Empire Life. So I have more control over that. And I'm not even doing that. Yeah. I'm just pushing through, like you said, and not being self-aware about yeah my schedule or my times and then I altered my calendar and I was able to show up like you said in the highest le higher level of an output as yes. opposed to thinking well I have to start at this time even if I'm half asleep sometimes or just having my first cup of coffee or I didn't have any kind of morning routine because mm -hmm. I have to start now that that was a huge aha moment for me on what drains me like really thinking about our times of productivity, but the mornings are probably the best for me to do some more administrative tasks or more tasks where I don't need to be fully present in it mm -hmm. or to do kind of a brain dump. And these are all the tasks that I'm going to do for the day. Those just flow for me in the morning. So just really yeah. getting like getting to know ourselves when are, when are we going to journal? What, when are things most flowing for us? And it might be different, or it probably is different for every yeah. female entrepreneur. Yeah. yeah, and I think that's that's the beautiful piece because uh, I feel like it was last spring I did a workshop on self care, and you know someone had said, you know, well, what if I do it wrong? Hmm. And my whole thing is, is you can't do self care wrong unless you're just not doing it. <laughs> exactly. Right? Like, yeah. as long as you're not harming yourself or someone else, and as long as you're not just not doing it, right? But self-care, I keep saying this, is a personal journey. We can see what works for other people, but until we try it on and know, you know, know for ourselves what works for us, what doesn't work for us, that's, um, I feel like going on a self-care journey and caring for yourself and learning how to do that is, is liberating. It's confidence building, because if we've just been in zombie mode, doing what needs to be done because that's how it's been done um you know showing up because this is how i've been showing up forever um we lose a lot of our uh, sovereignty we lose a lot of our, our personal power right so the second we take that moment to really get clear about what it is for us experiencing that on a level that speaks to us that's when we have an opportunity to really like open up and set ourselves free right 
So personally, I believe our soul's purpose here is a joyful experience. So that's mm -hmm. why I always go for and encourage people to understand what brings them joy and what brings them light and what brings them fulfillment, right? Because uh, good times can only follow from there, right? Like, yes. <laughs> we can only enjoy our lives more from that point. And the things that we enjoy tend to come naturally, tend to flow, right? There tends to be some ease about it. Where when we're doing things that drain us, there's going to be resistance, right? There's going to be um, a lot of self-doubt, frustration. There's going to be these moments. Not saying that in the process of learning things, new things, that those elements aren't there. Yeah, like right? the gym. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like it could be sore, but that's okay. That's a, that's a healthy kind of soreness. Yeah, because we're sore, but we know that that booty pump is just right yeah. behind the corner. It's yes. like, okay. Yes. <laughs> fight tooth and nail to get to the gym but I know once I've been there for a little while been consistent the benefits are there right and so it's uh it's that fine dance between the two you know the the lighting us up and draining us because we can have one experience that flows between the two even right and exactly. so it's really yes. being mindful of in this space in this moment do I have the bandwidth to do the thing yes right? And being able to <laughs> communicate, communicate that if you don't, or what you do have the bandwidth to do. I think yeah. that's a level where we can go into the vulnerability of, of that in the next session. And I feel like it's a whole nother, like a whole right. nother session is about being vulnerable enough to say what you need or what you can and cannot do, what you have the bandwidth to do and not feeling less than and not right. taking it personally, especially at the beginning, if we've set unclear expectations with people yeah. and they reflect that back to us like oh well I, I just thought you know you were gonna do xyz or or i can't believe that you're tired again or any any kind of yeah. <laughs> moment we can as it becomes easier for us it gets easier not to take that personally like i, I did really want to be there for you or i did I remember at the beginning of Empire Life too, it was harder for me to say something like that to a client or prospective client if something came up last minute. And it's so easy for me now to be like, yeah. I can reschedule with you. Like, I really have to do this thing. And I have nothing, I have no anxiety about it. And with me yeah. releasing that and being vulnerable, other people are understanding that kind of space that you're holding for yourself and it's easier for them to ease into that and then we feel less resistance from them and we don't realize it's it's about us having less resistance and holding that space for ourselves over time it gets easier so like if you're listening to this it gets it gets easier like you said <laughs> Oh, it time. does it does get easier it does i know i'm over here chuckling but it it, it it definitely does get easier and i'm sure you can um, speak to this as well but it's gotten easier because you've consistently shown up right and mm -hmm. as, you as you consistently have shown up for yourself and your boundaries um you've seen that oh wait nothing bad has actually happened all those worries and fears i had like oh none of that actually went down right like i'm still i'm still standing and taking care of myself and oh looking cute too while i do it like <laughs> what like exactly <laughs> this good? yes and that's and it. people adjust people mm -hmm. adapt and adjust i think that's something really incredible to remember especially with family and close friends they're constantly learning we're, we're constantly guiding them yeah. in how to receive us or how to take care of us or what we need and if it feels like there's some resistance at the beginning, they can learn and they can be guided to. It's of course it's easier at the beginning, but if wherever you're starting, yeah. <laughs> like if you're starting from a new relationship, I mean, it's probably easier, but wherever you're starting, just to say, I have this bandwidth or I don't have this bandwidth. Yeah. It, so powerful i completely agree i know we're, we're coming up on our time Miriam. do you yeah. want to share your your three so tips i've got my three yes. things Woo. three things you can start doing right um in terms of self-care and caring for yourself and, and building that that muscle that willpower right so the first thing is going to be a mind tip i would love for you to start showing gratitude for what you 
get to do, right? Versus the, mm. the complaining, right? So there are so many, there's so many moments where we create the pressure in our worlds by, by saying, well, I have to go do X, Y, and Z. And those things that you have to do, there are other people out there who would feel like it was a total blessing to be able to do the things, right? So let's yeah. start showing gratitude for the things that we get to do daily versus putting the pressure on ourselves because we have to do the thing. No, you get to. And that, that mm -hmm. is a huge blessing, blessing in itself. So if we can make that shift out of the complaining and into the gratitude, right? Because there's so much available to us in this world and you don't know who else is watching you mm -hmm. and seeing what you get to do and saying, wow, how do I get to that place? So true. Yeah. So that's my big mind tip, a self-care tip right there. Let's show gratitude for what you get to do versus the complaining about what you have to do. Our body tip. I kind of mentioned this earlier with the pairing, the, the draining with the life-giving activities, right? But our body tip is before or after a draining experience, I'm encouraging you to move. Let's move that energy around. So whether that's going for a walk, having a dance party, going to the gym, doing some yoga, um, maybe it's even cooking or cleaning, but it's the act of moving your body, moving that energy around. It's so easy to say, have a bad day and throw ourselves in the couch and sit with all of that. Mm hmm Sit with all of that. I want you to think about a, a kid when they have, a little kid has their tantrum, <laughs> right? What do they start doing? flailing their bodies everywhere. Can you imagine all that frustration and pent up frustration they have within them when they're having their tantrum that they're letting out as they wail and shake their <laughs> arms, right? Or legs or the whole body is all over the place, right? Mm -hmm. So why not have your own little tantrum, shake that energy yes. off of you, whatever it may be, five minutes, maybe you just walk around for 30 seconds, shaking your arms around, whatever it is. All I'm saying is before or after a draining experience, move your body. Let's release some of that energy. Let's shake it off. Let's, you know, while we're moving, we're going to be breathing more, right? So what are we doing there? We're bringing new oxygen, new air, mm -hmm. new energy into our bodies and expelling the, the heaviness, the staleness, the frustration, all of that. So step two, move your body. Okay. Release that tension. Our third tip I would love for you to oh no am you're I back. still here yeah you're, okay. you're, you're, you came back sorry about that <laughs> <laughs> third tip. this is our soul tip right I would love for you to take three centered breaths right and say talking to yourself you're gonna find something that you're proud of yourself for right so you're gonna take three deep breaths get yourself centered come back to your body come back to yourself and you're gonna say I am proud of, insert your name, so may it would be, I am proud of Miriam because, because she showed up on this live chat today with Allison and talked her self-care talk and had a good time doing it, whatever it may be, but it's time to start talking to ourselves, mm -hmm. uh, spilling, pouring, there we go, pouring life into ourselves and how we're talking, right? Because I guarantee you, you haven't told yourself recently that you're proud of yourself. Maybe you've never told yourself that you're proud of yourself. Maybe this is a new thing, but you deserve to hear it from the person you are with all the time. Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> you deserve to hear it from yourself. Okay. So let's really be, um, you know, mindful of that, right? That's being mindful of how we're, how we're talking to ourselves. And I'm asking you to be more than mindful. I'm asking you to be intentional and take time to say, I am proud of Miriam because, um, I'll be honest that. with you, an alert that goes off on my phone every day around one o'clock, right? And it's, I am proud of, and like, I, I have that moment with myself just to speak life and encouragement to myself, to get grounded, mm -hmm. to just uh, witness myself, mm -hmm. right? Witness do you myself. say it? Do you say it out loud or do you encourage people? Oh, it depends the day. Depends the day, okay. <laughs> I was wondering if, if it's even like something to do with someone else, like as you yeah. get more comfortable. Allison, make it your own. Okay. Yeah. Make it your own. So if you want to do it with someone, I'm I sure. absolutely love I'm sure that. That would feel yeah. vulnerable, even another level of vulnerability. Yeah. Say, say it out loud or even to exchange and then say mm -hmm. something that they're proud of you 
I mm -hmm. I feel there's another level of actually talking about ourselves to ourselves. Like, yeah. We're so quick a lot of times to see someone else doing something and mm -hmm. say, oh, I like what they're doing as opposed yeah. to thinking about, wow, I did that today. Or like yeah. getting out of bed. I'm proud of myself getting out of bed even today. Um, yes. And example. sometimes that's a, that's a big deal. There are yeah. days where getting out of the bed is a big deal and you deserve to be proud of yourself for that, mm -hmm. right? Um, and in those moments where it is a big deal, sometimes we can be looking for others to, to acknowledge it, right? But we're missing out on a lot of magic and personal power when we don't look for ourselves to, to say it, right? When we give that over looking for everyone else, when right here, right now, I can say, girl, I'm proud of you. You got yeah. up. Yeah, you got up. Sure. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You showed up for yourself exactly yeah. exactly so those are my three mind body soul tips i'll run through it real quickly show gratitude for what you get to do right before or after a draining experience move your body release that tension okay and our third thing is take a few deep breaths and say i am proud of insert your name because hmm. all right so let's really be here uh, with ourselves building that awareness I love it. I love it. And we'll both be in the comments. If you guys are watching this on the replay or do hashtag replay, we'll be here to answer yeah. them. And we don't have it next Monday because it's Moral Day weekend, yeah. right? So it's the following the next, Monday, the next yeah. one, June 7th, right? June 7th. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yay! I'm like, I, I think it's June 7th. <laughs> yes. I'm pretty sure because I, I know that weekend is a big weekend with my daughter finishing up everything. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, well, good luck to school. your daughter. Congratulations to Thank her. Thank you. Yes, this I'm very proud of her. <laughs> yeah, this was not an easy yeah. school year, so you know. All oh yeah. To the end of it, I'm like, kudos. Yes, to yes. <laughs> Amen real. to that. And I hope you have a good rest of your night with Thank your you. family, your friends there. And I'll talk to you soon, Miriam. <laughs> you got it. Take care. Bye. Bye.